Hey, <laughs> hello, good morning everybody, greetings from the very sunny Berlin. This is Bernhard Hollinger with another, another let's see what happens on the Octatrack video from sunny Berlin and um, I'm very happy to be here in my dark room making another video for you and this time I decided to challenge myself a little bit and um, I came across I came across a video well backstory is the following like I was doing a tour for which I needed a, a bass synthesizer I'm an electric bass player right and I play the upright bass and then I needed some more synthy bass sounds so I got the MOOC Minitor. Cute little machine. And I love it. It's really, really cool. Um, though it's the desktop version, I realized like it would be cool to have the keys. Obviously, I got the keys to it, but like um, I came across a video just this one broke right like something happened i gave it to an incredible guy and just received it back it works again i'm finally happy again and the first thing i did was like checking out what other people did like um a more advanced and more experimental things with this because this is very basic but um i remember i tried out some stuff and you can get really cool sounds out of this especially like the filter and the resonance it's very very sweet and um, I came across a guy who did a ambient, not really an ambient track, he just made a track using only samples from the MOOC Minitor. So I've never did, I've never made a sample pack myself, right? I'm just like getting them from people. And I decided I'm gonna sample my MOOC Minitor. And I just finished that. And I decided to give it a try what I would come up with using my own samples from the MOOC Minitor as this guy did in this video and he did really cool stuff and I thought I'd give it a try uh, just to see what happens and what I would do and um, I already uploaded my sample pack here so let's go MOOC Minitor sample pack so let's turn it up Let's turn it, turn it up. So it's pretty cool, pretty synthy, pretty bassy. Also like a nice hi-hat or clicks or laser sounds. So this is a pretty cool. Oh. Let's start with a kick. I want this kick. What else? This is really cool. This is really cool. The hi-hat sounds are really cool. The kick short is really cool. The laser sound is incredible. Okay, cool. So I got this really nice kick. I have this really nice, almost like a, a snare. And this is like the hi hat or click sounds. So let's see. Um, So new project, so we have here everything. Oh, wait a minute, what did I just do? Okay, I just, I, <laughs> okay, this was stupid. So I just made a mistake and I just exchanged samples of our project that I already did, so let's reload. Um, as you can see, I'm only at my 
first cup of coffee. So let's see. Okay, new project, here we go. The samples should be still in my list. Ah, uh, they are not. Okay, then we have to load them in one more time. Yeah! You know what, let's just all load them in. If you want me to send you that sample pack, I'm very happy to do so. So if you want that, that Minitor sample pack, just send me, send me a message and I'm happy to send it around. So let's do this, kick. I want something more ambient, more slow. So 80 is always a cool tempo. Why not doing it like 74? Okay, let's see. This is kind of cool. I also want something more I want something more like experimental, not really groovy groovy, but like this kind of more abstract groove stuff. Oh, but you know what? We're gonna do the same trick like I did last time because I want this to be faster. So we double it up and just have to remember that. Let's do 146 because it's a weird tempo. Let's see what happened. Gonna do a long circle, the kick drum. I'm not gonna start with the kick drum, I'm just gonna start with this kind of like weird pattern in the high clicks, like a bit like Alvanoto. This is cool. We immediately gonna do some of the, the stereo panning that I always like to do. It reacts on the trigger and it's a random thing and then we just turn it up here. Yeah, and now we have like, it's panning left and right. You don't really hear it, but I hear it and it sounds awesome. I want it to be a bit more Ah, oh, this is kind of cool. So here I did, I recorded a row of notes and I played with like the, the pitch of the, the second oscillator to create like intervals. down the octave very ups like a more like a lead sound and very bassy mm -mm. this is cool I like those the first four so let's slice them up Set end here, yes, okay. Then um, create slices. Let's create some slices. Add a slice here. And then we end the slice exactly, zack. No, then we go on. Ah, wait, the ending of the, oh yeah, let's see. Cool, okay. So that's the first slice. Well, let's see. Ah. 
Uh, you know, I think we can do that, that we slice it up like this. But you know what? It's not working because I have a static machine. So now we would need to to do the the flex machine. So we load we load this one wrong in here. Zack. And now I can slice this up. Zack. Add a slice here. Then we're gonna add another slice here. Suck. Just gonna make sure that it's like. talking shit. I've never really sliced stuff up. What is in the crop to selection? Okay. No, I just want to do slices. You know how to do this trimming. We need to do slices. Disable loop, delete slice, reverse slice, normalize size, delete all slices. Okay, you know what? Maybe it's even cooler to go back to that machine and then to just work with the length of it. Zack. So let's see. Um, and the coolest we do, we can do like different starting times. Oh, nice the time stretch. Makes it glitch a bit. I like to do most trigger conditions I'm just gonna do it random this one we say if the one drip pre does not go and this one we say something like just the first of the three times so now we also have totally different trigger conditions so it's really becoming it's really like a bit which is like the river. So now some kind of abstract groove would be cool. What would be cool is like Woo! 
Yes, exactly like that. And one thing I really like to do in my master track, I love to have the eighth track, the eighth track as a master track because I can use the compressor and it binds it kind of like all more together. And you can really go very harsh. The interesting thing is there is this guy, Howard. Howard, this is for you, kind of for you. Um, I did a tutorial about the arranger mode the other day and then he read anger mode and he was like, wow, anger mode, how would that sound? And interesting, I thought of it. And one thing I I realized while working with the Octotrack, the Octotrack is a, has a great sound engine, it's amazing. And obviously it's a sampler, so the sound you get is very dependent on the samples you get in, though you can do a lot with the samples and change them up. Um, there is a clean way to let the samples play without any digital distortion, but actually like an anger mode <laughs> would for me be like to distort the hell out of this. And this is also what I, what I see with fellow musicians nowadays, especially like living in Berlin, people are really not afraid of, not afraid of this distortion. They are really looking for that. It's a very punky way. And actually it can be achieved very nicely with a gain to just really crack the sound up to really, you know, the kick drum distorts, you get like a little bit of the clipping on top, but it's when you're consequent with this and you're like using this, like you're really consequent with that and applying it to like several sounds at the same time, you get a very organic mix because also the compression, what the compression does is like the stronger signals, like the signal, all the sounds they really fight to get through. So in a way you get like a very organic mix out of this. I kind of like this though. It's like, you know, the kick drum, it sounds really smooth like this, but like this. This is a bit too much. It's kind of cool. So we have the click. We have the kick drum and I have this kind of like This is cool. Let's do something like a simple backbeat to see how this.
Yeah. So this is really interesting now because now I have the the compression, the master tracks. So like there are also like the long pads they distort, and I don't want them to distort. So now it's really about fine tuning also and finding the sweet spot to have enough compression to make this sound really really tight together yeah. and little enough for this not to distort, right? Let's work for now just with a little bit because if I want the bass drum to sound really heavy I can always do the compressor there separately, you know? Here, add some distortions or high frequencies. It's a bit snappier. Hear this? It's beautiful. And then here's. the balancing and I kind of like to have the filter a little bit working so I'm gonna put on an LFO on the, on the base here and I say it should work free, it should go really heavy, it should go faster. Oh, but this is too fast, really slow. I like this kind of like the piano note and there we're gonna do like an LFO on the on the volume so it's kind of like moving a bit freely you know going softer and then and also here there we're gonna do it also on the delay the delay volume so sometimes it's louder and sometimes it's a bit softer that's kind of cool yeah you hear this this is beautiful so we have the volume we have the delay volume and maybe yeah this is beautiful What about if we turn if we turn this rod? Oh. What about if we Yeah, this is cool. Yeah. Wow, that kick is great.
this to be even snappier. Yeah. cool this is kind of cool to do like to do the, like an LFO here that is kind of just like um, it's just some accents on different ah you know what let's do like this that we do that we lock them somewhere so nice and you know what we do here we also gonna do a reverb send it just a little bit I want to hear how it sounds like if we do that one, but we turn it around. So it's like. thing what I can do now is I can use I can use that one with the long notes to play live on top of it like a melody you know that could be cool so we go in here and we say we play this one chromatic Attack a bit, the release, okay, but then the hold, we're gonna. This is the root right here. This is wild! Woo. So now it's already distorting, so now 
In order to have it a more clean, a more clean picture, we have to turn everything down a bit. So this one, the clicks are really, are really snappy. Interesting thing is now we turn it all down so nothing is like exceptionally loud and then we could put the compressor on the main channel to kind of like tie it together and make it loud enough. And this is something I have discovered on the Octatrack a lot that um, it's very important to take care of this in order to have all the sounds equally. But you can also play around with this and when you distort the hell out of it, 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 it can be beautiful. like this, you know, but it's very dirty, but this would be the anger mode for me. So here it's also cool because now we pitched up the we pitched up the snare and what could be cool is we can also do like more rhythmical stuff for example the bass drum doesn't have anything here so here could be a nice bread like a nice thing for this to be re-triggered see but then we can also say like why not put an LFO here on the on the raid for example that would be interesting and do it randomly so raid it re oh wait raid it reacts on the trigger with LFO1 so let's see how this sounds like Ah, yeah, here we go. And when we do this, free, and we do it multiply. Yeah, this is kind of cool. And then at the same time, we're gonna give it like. Ha! This is too fast, see? It's too dirty. So, four was kind of cool. And at the same time, we make this vibrate on the two speakers and this is how we make that we're gonna go to the balance we're gonna say random we're gonna say trigger and we're gonna say speed up so now when i do this and i do this it should be like going crazy yeah in a way i still don't like it too much because it's a bit too distorted but maybe also we can do something here to make it really short short and snappy and maybe we do the this is kind of cool yeah this is cool but it's too loud so now we need to turn it down quite a lot because it's quite quite strong yeah maybe the timing a bit later This is cool, so now it reacts to... You know what we can do? So we can do... We continue this one, and we say like... It stops here. We're gonna re-trigger it here as well. We're gonna copy that one, put it here. But here we decide something else. We say like... Even more... like something like this 
Barbie down here because it's too too short. really cool why not doing um, parameter log and then say like here in the end it's delaying a bit it's a bit too late here there's delay coming in just here it's not really working maybe I have to put it even further yeah there we go I don't really like the delay here. What about if we do like a spring river? Yes! What happens if we do... Ah, there's already a lot of distortion here. like this. nice. I had to do it a bit softer. This one still needs to be even softer because it's so hard. So this is kind of cool. So now I have those 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 ideas, and the interesting thing is I'm always kind of wondering because like the octa track for me is always amazing if I need to get a thing like this, like it's so fast, it's so accessible, and it's so um, yeah, it's really really fun to <laughs> just let yourself see what happens here. So now I would. The next step is to just would I would add much more much more conditions to the trigger so I can have longer circles without any repetition like the kick drum could be a bit more melodic or like more rhythmic reacting to each other. Um, but what's really cool now is to actually think about how would I play this live, right? Let's add some some reverb to the master. So the interesting, how would I do this live? This is really interesting because live, now I'm thinking of.
some reverb here. Like I will try to look for a build up like this because this is like the, the quarter notes here is really is really fun. And also when the, the, the snappy clicks come in, it's really cool. What I don't like is the snare. I don't really have a cool a cool dirty snare, so maybe maybe I'll use the clap instead. So the problem is like now I want to exchange it. If I would just load in the clap into the machine now, this also would change. Um, what do I have now? 72. We can try and just see what happens. Otherwise, I need to just like uh, sample lock it. But let's see what happens if we just do this. This is kind of neat, huh? Interesting thing is now there's still so much space in a way. Maybe this would be like this would be the straight version, right? Um, with having the the snare just here as like a stable slow backbeat of like this. Uh, but what happens? Because for me the kick drum pattern is super intense. And the interesting thing is you have this kick drum going and this the this the, the snare just here but what happens if we just copy the whole pattern and now in this pattern we try to adapt the the snare even more to the kicks so let's see for example you know what i mean for example to here then we have this here we have this here let's go here why don't we do one here? Tup, tup. Ah, this is cool. Why don't we do one here? Then we go here. Then we go here. Then we go... We switch it a bit. That could be fun. Why not doing one here? And then it's when we leave. And then... The thing is, it's it's already it's already nicer, that kind of sound. But I'm not convinced yet. Maybe we can do something to to just compress it more. What happens if we take like a really distorted snare, like psh. Interesting.
What happens? Look, I'm not gonna gain. What happens if I do the the kick drum a bit more? EQ it a bit. out the high frequencies now it's very soft it's interesting Wow, that's it. That was it. It was a bit too crazy and I didn't really get the aggressiveness that I wanted, but also like the idea was not it to be an aggressive tune. It wanted to have something more abstract like this. And therefore maybe the, the bass drum should have been a bit more mellow like this. And now I can gain it up till here. So this is a bit, the interesting thing is yeah, this is great. The kick sounds great. Oh, I'm not sure if I like this snap. It's a bit shitty. This is a bit shitty too. What happens if we do? This is really beautiful, wow. Very beautiful. So it's more about this piano note also, the, all the time coming in. And you know, the interesting thing is here, so we have the volume, we have the delay time, and the last one we still have free, right? The last envelope, uh, the last LFO. So what I also like to do is, the first one with the volume is just a normal sine wave. So what's kind of cool is to also use one one LFO to influence the tempo of the of the other LFO so to get a bit more of random character to it let's see this here we go LFO speed one or speed two speed one of the first LFO and this one we do random and this one goes free and we do it really slow and now the tempo of the first LFO changes which is cool because now there's more randomness there's a bit more organicness to the to this piano note coming in and out. Love it! Oh.
So now I'm basically trying to not let it distort, but a lot of times distortion also comes like just from the delays and the and the and the reverb. So this is such a fine-tuned work, you know. I really like that delay here. Also to do with the filter, sometimes the depth of the filter is just too much. This one, the, the pads, is, is, is strong. So actually, we should EQ. I love this with the filter, but maybe it's a bit too much the filter base. this one <laughs> so we can say this one just happens every I don't know 13% and then we say this only happens when the pre is gonna be played oh. so this is only kind of like this is only gonna be some random accents you know This one is a bit random. Here. It would fit here. Yeah, this is kind of cool. So now I made it very, very, um, very, very soft everything in order for it to not to dest uh, destroy, uh, distort and Yeah, so now it's really like more like an abstract thing with those chords being randomly played, but it has this kind of melody and I can play this one. This is This is beautiful.
No, this is the filter. Life um, I want to try one more thing. And I'm really, really curious because what I have uh, been doing recently, I uh, got my I got my Tascam Porta Studio back also. So a lot of things came back. Look at this. Look at this. Let me show you. Oh, how is this going? Wait, let me show you. I'm going to take that one. Zack. So now what I'm doing is I'm sending out, I'm sending out the whole thing from the Octatrack now to the Tascam as well. And I try to see how the compression of the old, of this, of the circuit of the Porta Studio 424 works. And what I did is I'm sending out the same signal through a queue out into my Tascam and then into the mixer and I mix it in. And I have been experimenting a bit and it's really beautiful to have the queue out, you know, like a, another output that you can use. And the interesting thing is you also have a queue level, which is really, really cool. So you can really fine tune how much of every track gets sent out. So I also realized that it's really heavy. So first of all, I'm turning all the cues down and you do this by holding Q and then you actually see it appears here Q. So that's the signal that you send out to the Q one, to the Q output. Yeah. So now to activate the Q out, you just hold Q pressed and you send it out like this. And then they blink and then you know it's also been sent to the Q out. So the what I've already realized with the tape, with the Tascam is that it becomes very trashy, very fast. And in a way I like it but not always and this one is a very clean mellow sound so maybe it's not very fitting but I want to give it a try because what I do like with the Tascam is the high frequencies so let's go to the clicks do you hear this it sounds great this one could be also cool just a little bit oh, wow. It just adds some brilliance on top, which is beautiful. Wow! Very delicate. Do you hear this? Oh, this is the kick. You can also see now and then you can hear yeah, here you see it. So this is the sound without a task come. Oops! Bam! Back on here. So I expect it really was with the kick, but the kick becomes a bit more creamy. The lasers sound great through the task come wow. The interesting thing is you can also turn down the level, the master volume, and it still gets sent out through the queue. So now what you hear, the lasers, only through the queue. Oh, wow! So you can play around with this, like... And now it's immediately, like, richer. Very interesting. And how, how would this sound when I play it live? It's really, 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 really strong.
Yeah, it's a bit too heavy, so maybe we need to change it to send. There's still, still some dirtiness in it, but in a way it's already much better and like with the Tuscam it just adds a lot of nice high frequencies and some, some compression and some warmth to it. And I've been experimenting recently also with my Yamaha tape deck and I need to clean it, it's really trashy, but in a way I also really like it. Um, I've been working on this EP for my solo project that's soon coming up and I used that the trashy sounds from the Yamaha a lot and there it really made sense to use it. So, um, yeah, that's it basically. Now I, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I hope you also enjoyed my MOOC samples. I created a sample pack. Um, so if you're interested in getting these samples, let me know, um, comment, like, subscribe, hit me up with a message and I'm happy to send it out. I'm also happy that you uh, hope you enjoy this video and now it would be time for me to go outside to catch some sun. Peace.